Hello and welcome to the Find Your Feminine Fire podcast. I am your host, Amanda Testa. I am a sex, love, and relationship coach. And in this podcast, my guests and I talk sex, love, and relationships and everything that lights you up from the inside out. Welcome. Welcome and thank you so much for being a part of this podcast because today we are celebrating 200 episodes. I am so thrilled and it wouldn't be possible without all of you and your support. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And today I am bringing back my special guest, my husband, Mark, because he wanted to interview me on what it's like or what's, what does it feel like after doing 200 podcast episodes? And so I, I thought that would be fun to share with you all and also share some highlights from some of the amazing guests that we have hosted over the years. So welcome. So yes, I've got some uh, questions that I'd like to ask you that I think will be interesting for your audience to hear as well Sure, I love it. about your podcast. <laughs> so as we go into t- number 200, yes. what? What what was the best show out of those 199 that you remember? Like what was like like one that really stands out for you? I mean, I've had the privilege of talking with so many amazing experts in the field of sex and relationships and honestly, I have to say some of my all-time favorites were talking with I've had Dr. Emily Nagoski on the show twice and she is just I love her. She is I'm one of her like <laughs> superstar fans. She's such a an amazing expert in this field and so fun and hysterical and just <laughs> down to earth. Also, of course, talking with Sherry Winston, who wrote the incredible book, The Anatomy of Arousal and Secrets of Female Pleasure. She is just so knowledgeable when it comes to our anatomy and what we don't know about ourselves. And I think even as a well-educated, college-educated, smart, smart woman in my late thirties, when I was first starting to do this work around sexuality, I read this book and was blown away. And so those were some of my favorites. I mean, gosh, there've been so many good ones, but those two, those are a few that stand out as some of my favorites. Oh, awesome. That's great. Oh my God. There've been so many good ones. <laughs> What's been one of the funniest conversations you've had? Funniest. I hear mm. you over here laughing at some, you know, when you're recording sometimes. So do you have one that stands out? If you don't, I've got a list of questions. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I'm pretty funny. I don't always let that show, but I think I am pretty funny. So maybe that's just my normal personality shining through. Mm -hmm. Let's hope. How about this one? Which one of these episodes was the most uncomfortable conversation to have? Like whether it pushed you or pushed the boundaries of content that you generally share, just something that like, Mm. you know, maybe was said that made you feel uncomfortable. Do you have one of those? I mean, honestly, I feel pretty comfortable talking about everything. Yeah. So nothing too crazy. I mean, I feel like that's the thing. It's like, you can't, you just got to be open to all the different flavors of things people enjoy and what people are into and, you know, choose what you enjoy. Yeah, that's great. And you are easy to talk to. So I can't see you getting too uncomfortable (laughs) about much about it. Um, Did you, do you, have you noticed any sort of like common theme around, I know you're talking about everything, um, but is there like one or two where you've had more repeat kind of Mm -hmm. themes that you can think of? I know it's 199 episodes. So one of the things that I feel like some of the top downloaded episodes are always around secrets of female pleasure. How do I have epic sex? How do I have a more satisfying sex life? You know, what you know, what will boost my arousal? What will boost my desire? What's that? What's missing in my sexual pleasure? Um, how do I get my sexy back? Like those type of things are always the top, top downloaded. Yeah. People like human connection. And it's, I mean, unless you're living with a roommate, it does come back down to how do we make our sex enjoyable, fun? How do I get more turned on? Um, things like that. Right. I mean, I think, yeah, people, I, I mean, I, I, I'm guessing because the, po- the purpose of the podcast really is to talk about sex and relationships and help people re-engage that fire within them. So I'm, I mean, I would imagine that's one of the reasons why those are some popular episodes because, mm-hmm. well, listeners, thank you for being here, but I'm hoping that you're loving that content. It looks as if you are. And please, if there is a, co- you know, a topic or a con- something that you'd love t- for me to talk about or someone who you'd love for me to interview, 
let me know because I know I, I ask this in the podcast often, but please reach out, email me info at amandatesta.com and share. I love getting your insights and I love having those conversations with my listeners because I feel like I get such good feedback and inspiration from you all. So yes. Yeah. So along those lines, yeah, the feedback would be awesome. Is there a, a lack of conversation around some topic that you know, you think um, should be talked about more, or maybe you've Mm -hmm. talked about it a little bit, but is there something that really should be brought more to the forefront? Well, I mean, I think that's the whole purpose of this podcast is talking about sex and all these taboo subjects, because, you know, as Brene Brown would say, when you shine a light on shame, it becomes less, less paralyzing. You know, it's, you have to bring a light to these things and talk about them because, when you do, it just frees you. And I do feel like there's such a stigma. There's so much shame around sexuality. There's a lot there. You know, people often struggle in silence or they're afraid to reach out or think there's nothing that can be done or, you know, all these things. And, or we just get stuck into the routine of life and don't think we deserve it or don't have the time or feel like we don't want to make the time or whatever it is. There's a million things, but I do feel like having the conversation about sex is so key. And it's a, it's not an easy one to have yeah. for a lot of my clients that I talk to, right? It's like not an easy thing to talk about in a relationship sometimes. So my intention here is to hopefully give you lots of, you know, tools in which to do that and to feel more comfortable talking about topics that might feel hard. Yeah, that's great. I think you've done a great job of that. That's good. Um, I, I've heard a few conversations over here. Um, <laughs> which one of the, you know, 199 was the most juiciest kind of topic or, or juiciest guest. I'm thinking of one person, but I'm curious, um, who you, uh, who you might've like, like, wow, that was hot. I don't know. There's a lot of good ones. I bet I know who you're thinking of. Cause we love this woman, our friend, Susan Bratton. Right, that's she's so I'm awesome. <laughs> right. She always has really juicy. She's been on the podcast, like, I don't know, three or four times, but she always has really like her, um, just her approach is always very fun. And, you know, like anything, these are learned skills often. And so we just often don't have the, the education. And so I love her hands-on techniques to really amp up things in the bedroom. Yeah. She's fun. So I have a lot of episodes with Susan and in the show notes, I'll share all these episodes that we're referring to. So if you haven't listened to those yet, you can make sure to do so. Wonderful. Um, on the flip side of that coin, what, what was one of the harder topics um, to discuss? And maybe because you're very transparent, and, you know, none of it's really taboo to you. None of it's really, you know, shrouded in any sort of secrecy or shame. Maybe you don't have one, but did you interview anyone? Did you have a conversation that was either difficult to get started or difficult to go deeper into, or just, just maybe a topic that's difficult for people to talk about. Hmm. I mean, Do you hear that? Amanda I don't know. Testa I'm in, just trying to think like what? <laughs> without an answer, without <laughs> words. You know, I, you know, maybe one thing that is, I don't have as much personal experience in is, you know, at this stage in the game in my life, I'm very happy in our relationship and feel very content and satisfied and fulfilled with our long-term monogamous relationship. And I'm grateful for that. And I know that, so I don't have as much personal experience in polyamory or ethical non-monogamy or those types of topics. So those, I mean, I'm very open to learning and I'm always love sharing that because, you know, everyone has their own flavor of what they're into. And so I always want to you know, talk with all different types of experts and people with lots of experience. So I just personally don't, can't speak to that as much from my own experience, but I do, I would say maybe those might be harder ones to talk about Yeah, for me. Right. Not that I, you know, just because I lack that personal journey in there. Is there one episode where you got this big, like, aha kind of moment or a big learning that, you know, from one of your guests that, I mean, just open your eyes to something different. I don't know about it, an aha, but mostly it's just like feeling so inspired. And just every single expert I talked to is like, yes, I mean, this is such important information and it's just not talked about enough. And I love that we're doing that here because I think that's the, the aha is that every time I talk to anyone, it just inspires me that the importance of this work. 
Right. I agree with you. How about this one? Um, what one, two, three things, add as many as you'd like. Have you learned from your guests that you've brought into your life? Now we'll get to another part of that question. What have you learned from your guests that you've brought into the bedroom? But are there some learnings that you, you know, picked up from your guests that maybe you brought into your own life in some way as a parent or a spouse or a, a friend or a teacher? Is there something? Um, I mean, I feel like a lot, if there's ever a good tool, then I'm always going to remember it. But, you know, I think, you know, one of my biggest teachers, a few of my biggest teachers, um, Layla Martin, of course, you know, I did her coaching certification in 2017 and also am a senior teacher and coach for her team and just learned so much from her with specifically with regard to the intentional power of, you know, self-compassion and having a sacred relationship with your sexuality and really the power of intentional self-pleasure and really creating an, a relationship with yourself around it, which is so huge. Um, you know, Rachel Maddox is another one of my mentors who's been on the show quite a few times and really around trauma resolution and understanding what that is and kind of some ways to make it less intimidating and more doable and easy. You know, it doesn't have to be hard all the time. Like work doesn't always have to be hard. It can be done in a way that feels good to your nervous system. And that's actually the key. That's the only way it's going to work. So um, I would say, you know, really understanding our anatomy is a huge part of great sex, which mm -hmm. is why I love Sherry Winston so much. She's got such a beautiful way of explaining it. Um, oh gosh, there's, it's, it's so hard to nail down just a few, but I would say those are some of the, you know, yeah, the big things. Yeah. I, I can see all that in your life, the self-pleasure, the, just the, and you know, that doesn't, that, that can mean anything, right. Enjoying chocolate and flowers yeah. in a beautiful environment. Um, the anatomy, right. You know, I mean, I, I took anatomy and we did, and I did a lot of anatomy, uh, courses and there's still, you know, things you can learn and, um, get a better understanding of and visualize. And, um, and I think you've done a really good job of doing that, sharing that, teaching that, you know, explaining that, you know, removing any sort of difficulty or uncomfortable nature around it. I mean, it's anatomy, right? It's like our right. nose, our elbow. Why do we feel, why do we have to call well, it the down, the down there because, parts, the lady parts? And because the fact that, you know, there's only so many, st there's, there's states in this U S that still don't require biologically correct sex education. Right. And that's a problem. But the other thing too, is just a lot of it. We're, we're never been taught. And there is the problem too, is that, you know, even with regards to education, you know, even a lot of the anatomy textbooks, they are inaccurate representations. And sadly, to this day, there is still debate of what's going on in the women's anatomy, which is what, you know, there's a lot of great people out there that talk about this. One woman who I really love is Jessica Penn, Jessica Ann Penn. You can follow her on Instagram. She's got lots of great info if you are curious to learn more about the politics behind it all. But, um, you know, I think that's one of the sad things is there's just, you know, women's pleasure has been put to the wayside yeah and it's a very penis centered model around sex that we learn so right that's a problem right that's a problem <laughs> um what, what are a couple things that you learned from some of your guests that uh you brought into the bedroom that i might not even know about <laughs> <laughs> well thankfully you're such a a good partner and i feel like we can talk about everything and that's yeah. a huge thing i'm grateful for yeah can be very vulnerable with one another. But one of the things, you know, I think this is such an important thing is just slowing down things, slowing down and being able to pause and stop when you need to. I mean, and also just allowing, I mean, this is not necessarily something I've learned from my guests, but just that I've learned in my work is that letting anything be possible and not thinking it has to look a certain way yeah. or be a certain way. But oftentimes, more often than not, we're trying to rush through and so slowing down is such a huge tip. Like whatever you're doing, do it like five times slower than you normally would. What about 10 times slower than you normally would? And especially for anyone who is pleasing of all the bodied person, slow it down. Okay. That's such a huge tip. <laughs> Start Gentlemen. from the outside and work your way in. Don't go straight for not many 
people, unless they're fully aroused, sometimes, yes, everyone's different, but a lot of times that, you know, you want to be aroused before there's touch penetration, and that can take up to 45 minutes. And that's, what's beautiful about learning about the, you know, the female erectile network and like all the, that goes on there and how to make it desire, desire penetration and play. Yeah. Fun that, things that's a great, that, I love, I love it slowing it down <laughs> because it just, one, it extends the, the pleasure without a doubt and it builds up um, desire in a great yeah. way. And it culminates in a, in a great way. Um, it lets, it lets us spend more time together and, uh, and, and, you know, I don't, I don't think this is too much information, but I think one of our most favorite foreplays, at least for me, is just laying naked in bed talking, <laughs> right? <laughs> Knowing what's, what's building, uh-huh. but just really spending that almost like 30 minutes, just laying there chit chatting and touching each other and, yeah, you know, really slowing it down. That's we we like connection. Yeah, we do. And, and touch, physical good. touch. Yeah, a lot of physical touch, a lot of connection. And these the fun thing is, is that, you know, viewing it as playful, like how you can make it playful and fun is a huge part of it. And I, I think when we first, when I first started doing this work, it probably wasn't as easy in the beginning, but now it's so much better. It's been all worth it, right? Yeah. <laughs> even when, yeah, right. I remember when you got into this, even some of the things you asked me were, or we talked about were really uncomfortable for me. Like what? If you feel okay sharing. Yeah. Course, you don't have to. Well, you know, I mean, you asked me a couple for a couple months, I think, you know, what's your kink? And I was oh, just yeah. afraid to tell you, I was uncomfortable and nobody had ever asked. It was always stuff you kind of kept to yourself. This is such a good thing to mention because I mean, I think that is so important. It is hard to talk about. But if you have like a desire, there's ways to playfully explore that. Right. And it's always about like bringing it to the table in a playful way. Like how, if, you know, how, maybe this be a fun, right? The yes, no, maybes. Yeah. The list going through it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is when even, you know, a lot of the things, maybe if the first time you look at one of those lists, you might not even know what they all are. So, right. But it's fun to just be like, Oh yeah, maybe I'd try that. Yeah. No, I'm not interested in that one. Yeah. Well, maybe I would be under the right circumstances, but let's not start there. <laughs> right. The yes, no, maybe list that we did do that. That was fun. And we landed on a lot of the similar things, uh-huh. but isn't it fun when you can share your desires and have them met? It's yeah. <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> um okay so what else let's see here let's see what um what 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 are your top let's get what are your top three downloads i'm just curious well number one anatomy of arousal and secrets of female pleasure with sherry winston so that's interesting it's i mean right we should know how our body works Mm -hmm. um you know i'm in healthcare i think the biggest problem with healthcare is people don't know how their body works. And so as much as we think feeding it and exercising it is all you need to know, there's a lot more to it than that. And, um, and that derails people's health. And so you can't have much pleasure if you don't know how to work the parts. It's so true. What other so one? True. What, what other, what, what's another one that was a top, what, what, what's number two? Number two was how to create epic sex and relationships with Layla Martin. Uh huh. How to create epic sex and relationships because they go together, really. Um, I mean, you can also have an awesome sexual relationship with yourself, but that relationship with yourself is important. Yeah. Well, um. So, but back to what you were saying about the bodies, I just want to re re just mention one thing on that, which is so true. It's like, yeah, you've got to got to be able to enjoy your body by knowing how it works. It's so key for everything in health. And, you know, a lot of my episodes have been around women's health and wellness because there's so much we don't know about that and how our hormones work. And, you know, we've learned so many false things along the way. So I always love talking about what kind of um, myth busting around that too. Um, Number three, secrets to a more satisfying sex life life with Dr. Emily Nagoski. It's Um, important, right? When you're in a relationship of any kind to have, if, if, if it's not just a roommate and forgive me if I'm st- saying it wrong. Um, right. You want to have sex with your partner and it's I part mean, of the relationship. 
Right. And I mean, this, this podcast is, is if you want that, right? Not everyone does, right. and that's if totally fine. That. Yeah. But if you want that, that's what I am here for to help you is to have more fun in bed and to have deeper relationships and to, and to love your relationship with your own sexuality, to love your sexuality and have confidence in your body and feel like the gorgeous sex goddess or goddess that you are, right? To be this royal sovereign of your own amazing self. Um, so, yeah. I've had so many great episodes though. I, I just feel grateful to be celebrating 200. So I just really, and also to thank all of you, that to me is really important because without you all, this would not be here. And so I really am grateful for all of your support and for all of you that have taken the time to rate and review the podcast. Amazing. And if you haven't yet, that is hugely helpful if you feel called to do so. And if you don't, that's fine too. But if you've loved the podcast, it would mean the world if you would write a review and give me a five-star rating and why you love it or why you think people could benefit from listening. One more question. Yes. Where would you like to see this go for your next 200 episodes? Yeah, good question. Uh huh. I think just continuing to bring in great experts and share my own wisdom. That's one of the things I've had a lot of fun doing more recently this past year is doing a lot more solo episodes, which that actually was a growth edge because it felt real easy to interview others, but not so comfortable doing my own solo episodes, which is funny. I think because I like talking to another person. <laughs> So it, it's just more fun to have a leather life human in my presence, uh-huh. but, um, but that too. So that's kind of what I want to see is just keeping the conversation fresh and new and innovative and really just meeting the needs of people listening mm-hmm. and how I do that more is just with all your great feedback. So I thank you for that. And I so appreciate all of you who email in and just share share what you love about it or what's touched you. So thank you for that. Well, thank you for uh, that interview. I appreciate (laughs) you letting me do that. It was fun talking about it as we were talking about your 200th episode. So thanks for sharing more about those 199. Well, I, um, that was fun, Mark. Thank you. Thanks for joining me again. And thank you all for listening. And we will see you very soon for our next episode. Thank you so much for listening to the Find Your Feminine Fire podcast. This is your host, Amanda Testa. And if you have felt a calling while listening to this podcast to take this work to a deeper level, this is your golden invitation. I invite you to reach out. You can contact me at amandatesta.com slash activate. And we can have a heart to heart to discuss more about how this work can transform your life. You can also join us on Facebook and the group Find Your Feminine Fire group. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, please share with your friends. Go to iTunes and give me a five-star rating and a raving review so I can connect with other amazing listeners like yourself. Thank you so much for being a part of the community.